Hi Stampin' Friends, welcome back, it's Sandy here. This is Distressed Oxides Combos and Cards, where I'm going to share my favorite color combos and then I'm going to make some cards with them. First up, we have Spun Sugar, Milled Lavender, and Seedless Preserves. And for all these videos, I'm going to be using Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock. So I've started with the lightest color, which is the Spun Sugar, and I am working on a glass mat. You see that I'm using a tissue to hold on to the paper and this is for a couple of reasons. I have very warm hands and so uh, the oil from my fingers will sink into the paper and also if you're holding on to the inked edge your fingers will leave fingerprints in the inked portion. So just a heads up there. So I've started with the spun sugar and I'm working in thirds so I'm adding one third to this and I'm using a gentle touch. I'm just adding layers and layers and layers of ink. It's kind of like Copic coloring. You have to work the ink into the paper. And so I'm shortly going to finish with this and I'm going to switch over to the milled lavender and you see I'm also going to use my tissue to pick up any of the excess ink that is on my glass mat and that's so that I don't pick it up with my blender and contaminate the next color that I'm going to be using. So I'm working in the middle here now and in a circular motion and I'm adding the milled lavender and they're quite light and again with the same as the Copic markers, I like to come back over for a second run at each of the colors. So you'll see that now I'm inking or I'm picking up the ink that's left over. I'm switching the card around to the other side, protecting it with my Kleenex, and then I'm adding my darkest color, which is the Seedless Preserves. And I've also spread this up, as you can tell. So I'm doing my third color, and then you're going to see that I go back with the other colors and I add another layer on each one. And this also helps to blend the three colors together where they touch each other. And so I'm looking for um, a nice even coverage, especially in these dark colors, because you can really see it when it's not even. So back with the lavender, I'm going down the middle and blending the joins a little bit, also darkening the color just a hair, and then I do the same thing with the sponge sugar. I'm going to be using the new Simon Says Heart to Heart background stamp for my card today and my Misty. And because this is a foam mounted rubber stamp, I'm going to take the foam out of my Misty right down to the hard core. I'm putting a piece of scrap paper in there. Notice the edge of this stamp has a little bit of a blank on it. So I am going to be adding my card stock in a little bit so that I'm not getting that on the edge of my art piece. So. I have heat dried my art piece, but I want to test this before I start embossing. So I throw on some embossing powder and see if any of it sticks. If it doesn't, I'm good to go. I'm going to use some repositionable tape to attach this to the piece of scrap paper that's inside my Misty. And I'm going in, I'm using grid paper. I think it helps to <laughs> help me stamp straight and to attach my cardstock where I want it. And so again, I'm using my anti-static to make sure that I've gotten rid of all my fingerprints and I'm using Versamark which is an embossing ink to ink up the stamp that is on the arm of my Misty. Closing it, giving a good rub to transfer all that ink and just to make sure I'm going to open it up again, I'm going to ink it again and I'm going to stamp it again. That will ensure that I have good even coverage and I'm going to get a nice white embossed image at the end of this. So just flipping that closed, giving it another rub, and then I'm going to take my cardstock out of there. Once I finish fooling around with these magnets, <laughs> these magnets are really, really strong and you got to be careful you don't get them too close together or they snap your finger. So I'm just going to move that down and then I'm going to close my Misty. I don't like getting embossing powder inside there. So I'm bringing over my embossing powder. This is Simon Says White Embossing Powder and I have a whole bin of it. Um, I use these little square bins because it's easier for me just to shake it all back in there and put a lid on it than trying to stick it back in the little tiny bottles that they come in. So finding a place to hold onto it where I can turn it to the other side and cover it with the embossing powder. I'm going to shake off the excess and then I have a dry paintbrush. I like to have a real close look at it to make sure that I don't have any little flecks where I don't want them. Flick it off with the brush or 
do some additional coverage like I just did there and make sure that it's a nice clean impression before I heat set it. So then you're going to grab your heat tool and just heat emboss it until it turns shiny. And I like to start with a warm heat tool. So I'm going to make two cards out of this one piece of cardstock that we have created. And I'm going to use my Gemini Junior and Simon Says Stamp Nested Hearts Dies to cut out the heart from the top center of this. And um, you may have noticed by now that we're going to make a couple of Valentine cards with this piece. For one of the uh, foregrounds on one of the cards, the one that's going to have the cutout heart, I am using the new Memory Box Pinpoint Leaf Plate, and you'll see that it embosses this beautiful design on this card front for me. To make that stand up a little bit more, I am going to mat it with a piece of Simon Says Stamp Smoke cardstock. So it gives it just kind of a nice little shadow behind. And then I'm going to mount it to an A2 card base made out of Nina Solar White. And this one is 110 pounds. So nice and thick, nice sturdy card. And for the heart, I'm going to go back in and I'm going to use a brush to just add a little bit of Seedless Preserves to the bottom of my heart. That way I've still got the three colors because where I cut it was kind of in the middle of the two colors. Use a couple of foam squares and attach it to the card front. So I've also die cut, and this is another memory box new item. This is called the Love Airy Script, and I have die cut three of them, and I'm going to layer them using white glue. And I prefer to do this because the glue doesn't set right away, so if I don't get it exactly on top of each other, I have a couple of seconds where I can move it over and get it lined up nicely. And I like doing three because it gives it a little bit of depth and some substance to the card uh, when you're finished. So adding these three layers and then I'm letting that dry for a few minutes before I go in with the brush again and the seedless preserves and I'm adding color. And why am I doing this? Because it's going to match exactly to my card front. Instead of trying to find cardstock that comes close to this color, I'm actually using the color to dye my cardstock. And it's a fabulous finish because they blend so nicely together. And you see that I'm going to also pick it up and work away around the edges to get rid of those white edges on my sentiment. And it takes just a couple of minutes. So then some more white glue and my tweezers to try and keep my fingers clean. And I'm going to lay this right over top of that heart that I just die cut out. So there's the beginning of the first card. Now we're going to move on to the second one, which has this main art piece. When you add your adhesive, make sure you go right around that heart, and then that way it will stay nice and flat on your card base. Again, A2 uh, top folding card. And I'm going to stamp the sentiment. This sentiment is from Simon Says Stamps Love Always, and it was last year's Valentine's. And I'm placing my card back into my Misty. I've got the foam back in place, and I also have a scrap paper in there. And I'm holding my card with the magnets, and I'm lining up my stamp. This is another great reason to stamp with a Misty. You can also check and make sure that it's straight with the grid marks that are on the front of the top of the Misty. I'm using VersaFine ink black and you want to make sure that you wipe away any of the excess that got out of the way there. I don't want any ink on my magnets because I quite often put them on my almost finished cards so I don't want to transfer that ink. I'm stamping twice to make sure I have a nice dark image and now I'm ready to embellish. I'm going to start by adding to the sentiment with these awesome new products. This is Simon Says Stamps CZ Designs Sentiment Strips. There's four in a pack and you cut them apart and use them on your cards. Four sheets for $4, which is an awesome deal. Instead of having to find a stamp, emboss it, die cut it out and try and get it the size that you want, all you have to do is snip these apart snip the tails off them, add a little bit of foam tape to the back, and you can pop them right onto your card. So I've decided on the XOXOXO for the card on the right, and then I'm making kind of a snarky one with this one, and I'm adding and chocolate. So forever in love with you and chocolate. For my husband, because we both like chocolate. <laughs> He'll appreciate it. 
So as I said, just a little bit of foam tape on the back and I'm going to attach this right underneath the sentiment on this one. And then you may have noticed that the other one got stuck on my arm, so I'm going to unpeel it and pop it on the card just underneath that pretty little heart that we created. So I inked up another piece of the cardstock with the seedless preserves and I used it and the nesting hearts, the two little center ones, to die cut out a whole bunch of extra hearts to use embellishments on my card. Again, they match perfectly, which is kind of cool. And it gives you another reason to use those pretty heart dies too. So I'm adding a couple to each one and I'm going to use the white glue again to do that just in case I need to move it around just a little bit. But it just adds that little bit of color and a little bit more interest to the card. I want to make sure that my fingers are nice and clean before I do this. Nothing like transferring some ink onto your almost finished card, right? That's very frustrating when that happens. You may notice over on the left hand side there is a little bag of sequins and those are Simon Says Lilac Bloom and I duck them out because they are exactly the same color as these two cards and so I decided to use a few of them for additional embellishments on the card on the left hand side and you're going to see that I pour them out into this cute little container. This is called a Magical Tray. It's by Crystal FX and I also got this at Simon Says too. So the next time you're in their shop and pop one of those into your shopping cart because in a sec here you're going to see just how easy it is to put all those sequins right back into that tiny little bag. Just pick it up, pop them in, and close the bag and you're done. Here's what the uh, container and the packaging look like. There you go, two cards created out of the one piece of Distressed Oxide color combo that we created today. All the links for all the supplies that I used are underneath this video and there's also a link to go over to my blog. You can see them there along with downloading a free PDF tutorial for each of today's cards. I hope you enjoyed them and I hope you will come back soon for another edition of Distressed Oxides combos and cards. And if you enjoyed today's video, please consider giving me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate that. And until next time, toodles!